All right, I'll give you a second here. All right, so our buddy Gorbachev is going to do a couple of different things here. And these are the names of some of the reforms that he puts into play in the Soviet Union. First being Glasnost. Glasnost is the Soviet policy permitting open discussion of political and social issues. We mentioned that one of the main characteristics of Soviet communism was this this whole narrative that you're not allowed to kind of disagree with the government. You're not allowed to speak out against the government. You're not allowed to voice displeasure or question the motives or plans or actions of the government because you're not doing the country any favors by doing that. The only thing you're doing is showing the rest of the world that there is fracture within the Soviet Union and difference of opinion and that not everyone there is on the same page. So this policy of Glasnost allows people to start, gives people to a certain extent some version of free speech. And the people certainly take advantage of this opportunity for this new form of free speech and they speak out against the government and a lot of their policies and uh, their planning and their actions and so on and so forth. And they don't whisper, they scream. Okay, you have to understand these people have been living under lock and key, silenced, hidden away from the rest of the world since 1945, arguably earlier than that, but at least the beginning of the Cold War, 1945. So this is 40 years of pent up aggression and frustration. That's all going to come pouring out of everyone in the Soviet Union as soon as Glasnost is allowed to occur. Uh, the second reform is called perestroika. Perestroika essentially allows for the private ownership of some businesses. We mentioned that the hallmark of communism is this kind of public ownership of the factors of production, right? There, we know classic communism, Marxism, you know, the workers overthrow the factory owners and all of the factory workers become part owner themselves. Well, this policy of perestroika kind of reverses course on that idea. And they basically say, okay, we're going to start allowing some private ownership of some businesses. So they're basically going against the entire system that they've built their entire empire upon. Look, I think that when there's disagreements between groups, a lot of times you know, admitting one side, admitting that they're wrong can bring about the end of that argument. And everyone can kind of learn from each other's perspectives after that. But the Soviet Union refused to admit it was wrong for 45 years, you know, 40 years, whatever you want to call it. Okay. This system of perestroika is kind of an admission that their system is not the right way to go. You know, if they, they adopted Marxism and, and classical communism, and the idea is that there are no owners, there are only workers, and we're going to create this classless society where everyone is the same, and it's going to be this utopia. And then when they go and they see what this system has done to the people, Gorbachev really starts to realize that people are living in poverty and misery. And he institutes this system of perestroika as an attempt to kind of allow the Russian people to climb their way out of this poverty that they found themselves in for the better part of, you know, since 1919, pretty much. Um, so this, when he institutes perestroika, it's kind of sort of the, the Soviet Union admitting that they've been wrong all along. And we know throughout the course of this unit that a big part of the Cold War is about optics, right? We said the, the Berlin Wall exists to keep people from escaping Soviet, you know, communist East Germany and going over to West Germany because the optics would be bad, right? Think about the optics now. Now we have Soviet government policy that allows private ownership. The optics here and the message that's being sent to the rest of the world is that communism as we know it, really doesn't work. How do we know? Because even 
the greatest champion of all of communism is admitting it. How do we know they're admitting it? Because they're instituting policies that allow for private ownership. And that's really kind of, that's really the biggest message of all.